let's take a tour of the parts of speech. Now this is a variation of a video I've recorded before and you may, may be able to find that elsewhere. But I'm doing this in preparation for the first day of the Ute Syntax class that's starting tomorrow. And um, I'm really excited to meet everybody. I just wanted to have this in my, my hip pocket, as it were, uh, so that if you wanted to get to something that was really designed for our class, it would be easy to do that. So um, I thought it would be useful for us to start with a, a little discussion about the fundamental units of sentences, words, and the the categories that linguists use to name the different kinds of words, different kinds of elements in sentences. So in this lesson, I want to make sure that I ex clearly explain the distinction between open class and closed class words, um, that I go over the main parts of speech for open class words, some of the parts of speech that I know are going to be important for us in closed class words, and then suggest ways you could use this knowledge for good by going to your uh, reference grammar or dictionary and applying what you've learned. So, the distinction between open class and closed class words might be one of the most fundamental distinctions among different words that we've got. And the, there's a lot of evidence that languages tend to sort of divide the words up into open class and closed class words, where the open class words are the words you think of when you think about words. <laughs> They're the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, the adverbs. They're the big words. They usually have some kind of meaning. They are uh, types of words where young people can create new ones or you can get new ones by borrowing or there's lots of different ways you can invent new nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Um, and there's lots of them in the language. Like, I don't know how many nouns we've got. There are a lot. We've got a lot of verbs. Um, so these are kinds of the, the words that you think of when you think about words. And we'll also sometimes call them content words, sometimes call them lexical words. That means the same thing as open class. Those are the, those are the big, big words. But languages also have little words, and the, the little words, the closed class words, tend to be words that don't necessarily mean anything, but they do things, like they're just necessary when you start putting words together into sentences. Um, you don't you don't usually get new ones of these. There might be only a small number of each type in your language. And um, they're, they're, you, you need them, but you don't always know why. We sometimes call closed class words function words or grammatical words. Maybe this will make more sense when we start looking at what counts as each type. So I've said the, the open class lexical or content parts of speech are the verbs, the nouns, adjectives and adverbs, which are kinds of modifiers, and then interjections. There, most languages have uh, an open class of interjections. We'll talk about those. Then the closed class categories, those include things like pronouns, prepositions, if you're speaking English, postpositions, if you're speaking you, determiners like uh, quantifiers and demonstrative determiners, things that mean this or that, these are those. Um, English also has these little bitty articles like the, un, and a. Uh. Those are determiners, conjunctions, ands and ors, auxiliary verbs, very important kids, and then particles, and there's, there's a lot of categories, but we'll just go over this set. So when we're looking at 
uh, language and we're trying to figure out which words are in which class, we can't necessarily rely just on the meaning of the word, right? Uh, because a word that has a really verb-type meaning, I'll take the English word run, that can be used as a verb in a sentence like, I ran, but it can also be used as a noun in a sentence like, I went for a run. So we want to we wanna identify our words word classes, not necessarily by the core meaning of the word, but by how it works in sentences. So verbs tend to be the things that in a sentence will have information on them about tense, past, present, future. They're the things that can form the heart of a predicate of a sentence. We'll talk more about what predicates mean, um, but they're kind of the base of the sentence. And then verbs are things that can, they, they take argument. Again, this is fancy language. We'll, we'll talk more about what it means to take an argument. But verbs are things that might have a subject, or they might have a direct object, or an indirect object. Um, so verb might be the most crucial, basic, uh, open class word category of all. Um, everybody seems to need verbs. Then nouns. Nouns, again, they can still be referring to things you normally think of as verbs, but, but you know, they can be nouns of action. But nouns are going to function in a sentence um, in that they will often combine with determiners. Um, Things like the, or that, or this, or those, right? Um, nouns can typically be marked for possession. So if it's a noun, it might be able to a appear in a construction like my noun. Um, and nouns can be subjects of sentences. They can be objects of verbs. They can be indirect objects. So... Again, noun is a pretty big deal. Everybody seems to need nouns um, to go along with their verbs, right? Now, modifiers come in lots of varieties. In English, it, there's a very clear distinction between adjective and adverb. Those are both kinds of modifiers. Not all languages maintain that distinction, but we'll look for it maybe in Ute. Um, modifiers can combine with a determiner plus a noun to modify the noun. That's when we call them adjectives. They may combine with verbs or even with other modifier elements. And when we, they do that, we call them adverbs. And then sometimes we talk about degree words like very um, as a special kind of modifier. So how languages break up the world of modifiers can be different in different languages, but modifiers have these, they provide extra information for uh, about either a nouny type thing or a verby type thing or about another modifier type thing. And then the last of the open class parts of speech, the interjections, these are content words that, that don't fit any of the other categories. And we run into these a lot. Um, things like, hey, or hello, or ouch. There, there are a lot of them, and we can make up new ones. They act like open class words, but they're not verbs or nouns or modifiers. They're kind of their own thing. And they're really fun, so I hope we have time to maybe look at some interjections as we go along. All right, so those are the open class categories, verbs, nouns, modifiers, interjections. Closed class categories, there's a lot more of them. They're smaller, they're more technical, they're harder to understand, so please just bear with me. We'll get better at identifying these guys. They'll start to make sense. 
Um, but I'm just going to very briefly talk about each one here. So fast forward this if you need to. Don't get bored. Don't fall asleep. All right? All right. So pronouns. Pronouns. English. I, me, you, he, him, her, they, them. These are little function elements that substitute for noun phrases. So they can be sentence subjects. They can be objects or indirect objects of verbs. And they usually encode things like uh, the person. So first person refers to the speaker of the sentence. Second person, the addressee or listener. Third person, someone else. They can also encode other information. Like in some languages, they encode the gender of the, the person that they're talking about. Um, some languages, they tell you whether the, it's an animate or inanimate thing. Um, but some languages, they even tell you whether they're a subject or object in the sentence. But they take their meaning from context. So if I'm saying I, I refers to me. I'm speaking right now. I'm Amy Fountain. That's I. But if you say I, I refers to you. <laughs> right? How confusing. So they take their meaning from the actual moment of speech. Pronouns. Prepositions or postpositions, two, t two names for the same basic kind of word. They are little words that combine with noun phrases. They, we call the noun phrases their objects. And express position or relations between or among objects. So English words like in the cupboard, on the carpet, uh, over the meadow, those are prepositions. They're called prepositions because they come before the noun phrase that they need, right? You say over the meadow, not the meadow over. But in a postpositional language, you would say the meadow over, right? Postposition just means it comes after the noun phrase. And they can, they can make a little phrase that might be necessary for a sentence. They might also make a little phrase that's just extra modificational information. Determiners, we've mentioned, these are really important little function words and they can be tricky, um, but they're, they really matter uh, to, to our ability to use a language in a way that sounds natural to others. So they're, um, Determiners are little function words, little, or they could be bound morphemes, or they could be whole words. Things like in English, the, a, uh, and un, those are the articles. That's a kind of determiner. We say the dog, a donkey, an eagle, right? Um, not all languages have articles, but all languages seem to have some kinds of determiners. So, uh, quantifier determiners are words that mean things like all or most or some. Uh, then there's uh, demonstrative determiners. These are really important. These, this, those, that, the demonstrative. So we'll work a lot on those because they're, they're very important. All right. And they can encode things like definiteness, like, am I talking about a specific thing or just things in general? They can encode information about how close I am to the thing or how far, whether the thing is visible to me or not, whether the thing is living or not, right? Determiners can pack a lot of important information into their tiny little selves. All right, conjunctions. You got to have a way to combine bits together. Um, things that have meanings like and, or, even other forms of conjunction like but. Now, some languages have little words for this. Others do it by the syntax. They'll, they'll have just a way you can put two elements next to each other, and that's how you convey conjunction, an and type meaning. Um, but everybody has ways of doing conjunctions, so we'll look for those. Auxiliary verbs, super fun. They're the tiny verbs that can 
sometimes be used to build a sentence all by themselves. So if I say something like, I am a teacher, the am is an auxiliary verb. In that sentence, it's acting as a special kind of auxiliary called a copula. A copular verb is, it sounds nasty, but it's not. It's just a little verb that that's kind of like a language version of an equal sign. <laughs> it just means is a or am. Um, but they can also combine with big verbs. Like I can say, uh, I am running in English, and that am is an auxiliary verb. They often have stuff on them to show us tense, whether the thing happened in the present, past, or future, how long it lasted, whether it's already over. Um, and the auxiliary verbs in languages are just often really super irregular. So there, you just have to memorize them. If you've ever learned Spanish, you know the uh, ser versus estar, those, those two uh, auxiliary verbs, super irregular, really hard. The English be verb is very irregular. And then uh, the English verb have is also an auxiliary. Um, then there are, just like in content words, the interjections are content words that don't fit anywhere else. In uh, closed class categories, we have particle. Particles are just little things that you got to have in your sentence, but we don't know what to do with them. They don't fit any of these other definitions. So like the two that we use in English to combine with a verb to create the infinitive verb to run that two, I don't know what that is. Let's call it a particle. When it's a preposition like to the store, that has a different meaning, right? Then it's a preposition, but to run eh, doesn't mean any doesn't mean anything. It just has to be there. Um, the negative word not. It's a particle. I don't know what to call it. Part of speech, but it's it's important, right? And you'll have others as well. So let's practice on an English example. Let's first. This is a true sentence. These are donkeys that are wandering around a uh, cripple creek, I guess. They get let out in the summers and um, they get to Rome and I think they must be very, very happy about that. So these lunky, lucky donkeys wander around their town all summer every year. Let's see if we can identify the content words or the open class words in this sentence. Those are going to be this one, lucky, donkeys, wander, town, summer, and year. So see if you can figure out what part of speech each of those words is. If you need to pause the video, that's great. If you don't, I'm going to reveal it here in a, in a second. I'm going to reveal my answers. You tell me if, I, if you think I'm wrong about anything. Let's see. Did you get that? So don donkeys, that's a noun, and they're lucky. Lucky is combining with donkeys. These helps us to, okay, so wander, that's what they're doing, that's the verb. And um, in a town, that's a noun, and summer, that's a noun, and year, that's a noun. All the rest of these things are going to be closed class words, so take a moment, see if you can figure out what the closed class word categories are. And then I'll reveal the answer, at least my answers, which you can then dispute if you wish. Oh, oh no, I went two. There we go. Did I do it right? So these is a determiner around a preposition. There, that's a pronoun. All that's a determiner. It's a quantifier, but it's a determiner. And every, also a quantifier that's acting as a determiner. So if we put it all together, there we go. We should have the uh, part of speech for every word in that sentence. So see if you can do this, maybe with another English sentence, 
maybe with a sentence you find in the Ute grammar, or maybe a sentence you already know in Ute. See if you can figure out the parts of speech. See if using the dictionary can help. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me for this one.